Hello everyone. Let's see what we are going to do today in action before anything else. So we are going to uh, connect our ESP32. In my case, I am using an ESP32 C3 to your Wi-Fi network and uh, obtain the IP address. So this is a basic example of how we are going to how we can use Rust for uh, uh, real-time applications. Okay. The cargo ESP flash is the uh, cargo plugin or uh, it's a cargo package that you have to install in order to flash your uh, any ESP devices from cargo itself from your uh, without leaving the rust environment you can just use this ESP flash to flash your uh, uh, device. Okay, now it is compiling and flashing. So this takes some time, quite some time, like uh, it takes 20 seconds almost. So that's that's fast, right? It is like uh, once it started execution, it is getting out lots of data in your uh, terminal uh, here entered main function so this will be in the code okay, entered main function and uh, we are connecting to wi-fi network using this ssid and this password so see here we are waiting for a client um, like we are waiting for the station that is having like that is your uh, wi-fi hotspot or wi-fi router and it is connecting to it using the credentials that you have given okay now once it is connected it will give you the ip that's all so here i am printing the ip info in a loop waiting for 10 seconds like it will constantly get fetch the ip address and uh, print it so this is what we are going to do and if you are interested in uh, more rust related uh, embedded system videos uh, please consider subscribing and uh, let's dive into the code okay so i am going to create a new project from scratch document and uh, tutorials i am going to create a new cargo package using the cargo generate so this This is the template that we are going to use. This is from Expressive themselves. Expressive has uh, have a uh, extensive support for Rust now. It is like uh, yeah, it is rapidly growing. There are lots of breaking changes introduced very frequently, but uh, the documentations are uh, yeah. You can follow the documentation now. I am going to create a new project just to show you the steps of generating a new project uh, because compiling from scratch it takes lots of time and especially I am recording the video also it will take uh, longer so I am just going to name it to real 2 and uh, we are going to use I am going to use ESP32C3. You can select whatever the board that you have. Currently, there is no support for ESP8266, I think. So we are we can choose from uh, any of this board. I have ESP32C3, and we are going to use uh, version 4.4, which is a stable version. Okay. And we need uh, we don't need dev containers for now, so I'm going to leave it as false. Uh, we definitely need uh, Standard support. Um, in this project, I am using standard support, so I am going to use go with true. That's all. The project is generated, and you can see uh, the files in the directory. Okay, so it will generate a basic crude hello world application that you can just compile using cargo build. But this will fetch the packages and uh, build everything from scratch. I'm not going to do it now. Like uh, I will open 
an existing project that I have already worked on. Okay, so this is how you are you will generate a new um, Rust project. So I am going with uh, the existing project. So let me go through the code once, and uh, we can just like uh, I will leave the link to my GitHub gist where you can uh, get this code and uh, play around with it. Okay. So the first 13 lines, uh, the first 14 lines are just uh, <clears throat> importing the modules that we are going to use. So this is like uh, we need ESP ID of call, ESP ID of sys, ESP ID of SVC. Uh, before using these things, like uh, the ESP ID of sys, only this will be available in your uh, basic template. So I'll show you the TOML file. Uh, that is created by the template. Okay. As you can see, only ESP ID of hall, uh, sorry, ESP ID of sys is included uh, in the default template. Okay. But uh, we need to add these things like uh, ESP ID of SVC, ESP ID of hall, embedded hall, and embedded SVC. Anyhow, on HTTP or for uh, my own application, my own project, uh, we are not going, we don't need these uh, for just connecting to, just connecting to Wi-Fi network, we don't need those. And we need uh, embedded SVC and embedded call. Um, so just to access some methods that are implemented in embedded SVC. Okay. Embedded call is also not required. Embedded SVC is uh, used for this example. Okay, we are going to use um, four, yeah, we are going to use four uh, external libraries, and we have included all of it. We are going to use the peripherals of the ESP device. We are going to use uh, ESP Wi-Fi. We are going to use the NVS or non-volatile storage of ESP32, and we are going to use the event loop or um, for handling the Wi-Fi events. Okay. Again, in the main loop, we have this function. This is this will be added by default in all your uh, cargo generated template. Uh, like ES, ESP ID of sys link patches is required <coughs> uh, as a bug fix. You can ignore this. You just have to add this for uh, ESP32 uh, to work with Rust. Okay. And I'm just uh, using the sprint statement to uh, know like uh, when we enter into the main function, what are the things are executed before the main function in order to know that I have added this here. Okay, very well, uh, ignore this line. And we need uh, three peripherals that are, uh, we need um, three arguments that that has to be passed to your ESP Wi-Fi uh, structure implementation. Okay, it, to create a new ESP Wi-Fi, we have uh, ESP Wi-Fi new method. So this is implement. This is included from your ESP ADF SVC Wi-Fi and ESP Wi-Fi. Okay, we are using that, and we are uh, creating a new ESP Wi-Fi struct and passing three arguments. One is peripherals.modem that we created it using peripherals.take so I am not uh, bothered about proper uh, error correction mechanism right now so I am just using the unwrap method in all of the uh, methods I am not doing any error checking it will just unwrap and uh, if there is any error it will panic okay so it's like uh, we are passing three Arguments one is peripheral.modem, which is used by the ESP Wi Fi struct, and we need a system loop that is to handle Wi Fi events. And uh, this is an optional parameter, so this is to uh, store your uh, username and password, uh, not username, your uh, Wi Fi name and password, I guess. Uh, that's all. Like, uh, this is the main function that is uh, handling the Wi Fi 
Wi-Fi connection, Wi-Fi disconnection, and uh, everything related to Wi-Fi is handled by this truck. Okay, all the functions following this method are called on this struct only. So I am calling uh, set configuration to set our SSID and password. So we are uh, leaving the remaining things as default by calling the uh, double dot default uh, default method. Okay, so this will use uh, the default arguments for this client configuration structure. Okay. So then we are starting the Wi-Fi driver or uh, ESP Wi-Fi struct, and we are uh, connecting it. Connect the connect method which will try to find this SSID and connect to it. So we are using this while loop for uh, checking if the Wi-Fi device is connected, uh, if it is connected to the Wi-Fi network, and if it is not, it will uh, loop through it, and uh, it will try to like. Uh, get the configuration and print it okay it will just print we are waiting for uh, the station i don't know wi-fi network to be available and uh, trying to connect to it so this will be executed in a loop unless uh, until we connect to a wi-fi network then the print line statement uh, it is just to show indicate that we are uh, connected to a network and uh, and then we are just getting the uh, station native this will give you uh, another struct esp native struct and on that struct we are calling get ip info to get the ip address uh, data so it will contain your uh, ip address subnet mask your uh, dns uh, name servers etc okay so we are just using this to show that we have we are connected to the network and uh, whatever the connection uh, parameters you have entered in your Wi-Fi router will be displayed. Uh, your IP address, your uh, name server will be displayed by this line. That's all. Using sleep method, we are uh, just in this loop instead of uh, running it. <coughs> very frequently we are just waiting for uh, 10 seconds every 10 seconds it will fetch the ip and display it that's all this is all the program is going to do so let me build and uh, display Oof. it is compiled now i am going to flash and uh, monitor okay cargo esp flash monitor this is how you flash your program also you can uh, mention the port by default it will run in your uh, usb 0 port and if you want to mention the port if it is connected to a different port you can mention it by using the port argument now it is flashing and you will see the port you will see the execution that we have seen earlier that's all As you can see, it is connected to the network and it is showing my IP, my gateway IP, uh, my subnet mask, my DNS, uh, DNS IP. So that's all. So I hope I have created a good uh, presentation of what is going on here. If you have any doubts, uh, you can uh, leave a comment. I will try to answer all, all your queries. Yeah. Uh, consider subscribing for more content like this and uh, let me know if you have uh, any suggestions for new videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.